And 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 even think about it because this is where we're at. <laughs> focused on me hey guys welcome to dynamic banter so good to be here steve thank you for having me. thank you for having me we kind of do have each other yeah uh we do in lo- both in life and during and, this podcast mm-hmm. and that's kind of nice i got you babe yes and thank you for bringing it up just put your little hand in mine that brings us to our first sponsor me babe <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Steve, can I tell you a secret? Yeah. I just got back from a trip upstate. Yeah. And I went to slow. I went to the San Luis Obispo area. Oh, yeah. And I want to tell you something. Okay. And I want you to take it the right way. Okay. I want to die there. (laughs) And I've been saying that a lot. And I think it's been um, getting people sad. Yeah. And it's like the opposite of that. And the best way I could describe it to you in a way that you would understand is rem- remember the end of the George Harrison documentary? Yeah. When they're talking about like when he died, he was so happy. And yeah. So he was ready for he it. He was ready for it. He and prepared he was completely for it. at peace. Yeah. That's how I feel about the central coast of really? California. You yeah. see it as a, a place that's beckoning to you. Yeah calling you home yes wow i love that that's beautiful it's like no other feeling i've ever had in my life why do you think that is i don't know i think it's a mixture of i'll tell you what it is i'll tell you what it is and then i'll tell you what after these messages we'll be right back (laughs) (laughs) i think it's a mixture of like it's like being on the uh i think it's a mixture of both of the places that i've lived oh that's cool yeah like temperature wise yeah and like there's moisture in the air yeah up there and there's just a vibe you probably get from it that you can't explain yes my friend said i had norcal vibes and i said what do you mean by that and he said you're very low you're very like low key and you like to wear pants (laughs) i'm yeah like being having grown up in california i'm trying to visualize what a what a norcal person is like mm-hmm. i guess they're kind of like more rugged sure yeah and that's me man i'm rugged yeah <laughs> first three <laughs> words that explain me rugged is in yeah there. maybe not number I one i wonder if it's because it's closer <laughs> to canada they get the they get the like the canadian i just think you're in a good mood more when it's a little cooler around. yeah yeah i guess that's true yeah but not cold i don't know right it's very interesting and not dark because if it's dark that's bad news temperamental yeah yeah but you got you got some time to like you to spend some time there dude so i know so many there's so many places that i go that i like that i've been like like doylestown pennsylvania i was like this town's fucking beautiful i love new york city i love things about so fucking many different places but i'm never like See that furniture store? There's apartments above there. I can live in those. I bet those are real nice. And I would go here for coffee and I want to walk this street every night. And uh, I don't know what that is. It was like falling in love. It's like I fell in love with the place. And we had been there. We've, me and Zoya have been there a handful of times before. But it's like like the more I go to different areas, I'm like, okay, I'll probably this is where I won't like it or whatever. Right. I keep seeing more of it and I'm like, oh shit. You're like taking notes. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, all the notes say, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. Okay. It's August 25th, seven o'clock. I uh, walk by. I'd be lying if I said I didn't love this town. (laughs) (laughs) How does Zoya feel about it? Does she like it too? She loves it. Wow. But obviously like it's like we would have to refigure out our lives. Right. So there are comedians like like Brian Regan. Do you know him? Mm-mm. Or Sebastian. Do you know Sebastian? The crab? Um, 
Well, think about any like stadium or theater stand-up comedian. Sure. For the most part, like live a Bill in Burr. like Trumbull, Connecticut, or whatever, and then tour all over. Right, 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 right. I right. think I, eventually I would like to do that. But yeah. Then. That's like, because that's where you go when you're like a stand-up, right? Like that's that's the road. You yeah, that's it, like winning. Right? That's like when you win it. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, the, that's the winning level of stand-up. It's yeah. like you can live anywhere you want. And still go out and, and just, perform to people. And visit time. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. So I'm like starting that. a GoFundMe. I need $600,000. <laughs> right, well, let's get it by Tuesday. <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Dude, I... It's... <laughs> Anyway, so this is the the long way to say that you're leaving. I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> that you're leaving and you're in a lot of trouble. No, no, no. I just had a beautiful time. I love that for you, dude. And yeah. it's nice to like have a place like that. Um I don't know if I've got one yet. Like mm -hmm. I I'm I haven't been around too much yet. Like I've been I've been around. I've gone places. I've traveled a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um I haven't really gone to like the nooks and crannies of this yeah this beautiful state we live in well maybe if we get out a little bit uh have you been there have you been in the pennsylvania no philadelphia new york no san luis obispo yeah central coast I, i'm sure of it mm -hmm. i but i don't know like like we're talking like past san francisco like no it's like three hours it's between here and san francisco so it's like three hours away from here three hours away from san francisco in, then it must have been like a pass-through kind of thing for me sure. i might have stopped for like food or like gas or maybe just have a sleep you might like it a lot yeah i'd love i mean dude i love the coastline like is it along the coastline yeah dude yeah it I mean, is the it's, coastline. it's gorgeous it's gorgeous i was doing this bit last night where i left the bar because why well, there's no you know and uh you i went to go uh find a piece of pizza yeah i walked like four blocks with my buddy and i was doing this bit where i was just pointing to stores and saying what they were and then saying <laughs> i could live in there <laughs> and they had like a real cool hole in the wall fucking comic book shop no shit and i'm like dude if we retire ish up there you open like a Steve Zaragoza comic book shop. Oh fuck! And you comics just, and collectibles. And you and it's just your things that you have. Yeah. Sorry, you can't buy that. <laughs> Sorry, you're just. It's five dollars to come in and Sorry, look at I don't what know I if you have. Get this. You can't <laughs> buy any of this. Mike, I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude. Just like you think about, you know. We're not going to not get older. Mm -mm. Can't stop it. And it doesn't have to be like everyone in this, old, in this town is so worried about getting older. And getting older and staying alive is such a privilege. Oh, yeah. Could be such a nice thing. Mm -hmm. So you look forward to Especially that. if you can, if you know what you need to do to get there. $600,000. By Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, someone was telling me about, um, I was just recently talking to a friend who was like, you know, we were thinking of like getting a house or something, but like, we don't want a house mm. or I don't want a house. And I was like, what? Why not? And they were like, well, I like to, I don't want to be stuck somewhere for like five to 10 years. How old is the person? Like, maybe like mid to late thirties. Okay. And, uh. They were like, yeah, I just don't want to be stuck around. I don't want to be stuck. Like, I want to be able to, like, be like, I don't want to live here anymore. And then move to another place. I want to give 60 days notice and I want to bounce. Right? And it's like, I've never really conceived of that. Because it's like, we grew up with the whole, like, American dream embedded in our brains. Like, in the fucking, you know, Pledge of Allegiance. Or, yeah. like, whatever fucking, it was just part of our go culture. School, and then you go to high school, and then you go to college, and then you get fall in love at college. And then you get, get married, married. And have, have kids, a house. Have a kid, have a house. Have a house. Yeah. White picket fence, and, like, live the American dream of, yeah. like... And you die putting up the fence. Right. You're a <laughs> nine-to-five dad who reads the newspaper when he comes home, and the mom yeah. takes care of the kids. And that was, like, embedded in our brains. Yeah. And because uh, it's kind of a good, those are all good things to shoot. For. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And why but not? Do they, is it one size fits all? I mean, you know, we, 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 I mean, a lot of people would want it to be, I guess. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> it's been. But like, uh, so I, I never really thought too hard about like, cause my goal was always to like, 
I mean, certainly you don't want to dump money in a renting your whole fucking life mm -hmm. either. And there are pros and cons to both, I guess. But certainly the biggest con to owning a home is, is you're kind of stuck there. You sign these like three year, I mean, three year more no, like 30 like, year mortgage. yeah it's like 30 years yeah. like you're, you're putting down roots yeah yeah and it's like this is where you want to raise your children and this is where you want to maybe like hand your house over to your kids and shit like yeah this is like it mm -hmm. and it's like very locked in um and uh and it's also like not super attainable much anymore to people like us like since the generation <laughs> before us kind of fucked it up a little bit mm -hmm. but um it's, but I never really thought like, it was always like, my dream is to just like make enough money to survive comfortably and obviously do that in a home. Right. Like a place that's mine that I have my garage and like, right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 And, uh, someplace that is just mine, you know, and I can yell and scream and like, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. Right. Um, but I never really thought about how that's just so ingrained in our brains from this culture, from, from just like living here and like movies and TV shows. Like you hadn't even thought about it not being the goal. Yeah. At, at one point. Not really. And then somebody says, no, I'm going to live in a van and then I'm going to drive it off a cliff at some point. Yeah. And, and it's uh, like, that's not terrible. No, 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 no. And if it like, <laughs> if it works for you, yeah. like maybe it works for you and you don't even know that it works for you because you never even knew that it was a possibility. Right. You know, and like, then you could have all this happiness that you never would have had if you were just like, if you never questioned your, what you were going for, I guess. And then Elon Musk sees that there's all of this, like this demographic of people that have learned to find happiness in the rustic lifestyle of just like hitting the road and shit. Yeah. And then he goes, I'm going to build the happy box. And it's this big black rectangle. And inside is just like toilets and a house and like your like rooms. And, and, and he takes all the like rustic cool shit out of it and just makes it this product because it seems like a road to happiness in some way would be to kind of like, release the shackles of, of the, of the idea that we need to own a home or we need to be locked into some place or something. Uh -huh. So it's like, you know, people kind of like rebelling against the idea of like the ideal lifestyle, the ideal American dream who lives in the happy box. People who like see the, the like that, that people who are low income or kind of like not like super wealthy uh -huh. see, uh, have found happiness in kind of just like not being locked down and like renting and homes and all this shit. Right. Like this is some future thing where like we figured out. Oh, this doesn't exist. You're yeah, just yeah. saying that. Yeah, I'm just saying this. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, I haven't, I feel like I would have heard about <laughs> Why this. Why haven't I heard about this? Hashtag no, happy this is, but this is a future projection because okay. it's like. In the future, we can't fight the rich. Yeah. You know, we can't, we wanted to eat them, but we can't because they're too powerful. And, and, um, and they're kind of, sinewy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly, uh, muscle. Muscle. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, uh, right. A lot of plastic shit. Sure. So, uh, you know, we couldn't do it. So we just were like, okay, well then let's just like try to find our happiness in this world we live in. And we kind of like create this like world where we don't need to be locked down into these like American dream kind of things that aren't attainable anymore yeah. because of like, you know, various reasons. But the rich see it and go like, whoa, they're so happy because they found a way to like unlock their lives from like the shackles of consumerism and all that stuff mm -hmm. you know in some way or at the very least they're living like they want to like they want to yeah, exactly yeah. Uh -huh. and not and not working towards a goal that's unattainable that serves the rich you know sure. um so yeah but but then elon musk sees that and is like how do how do i let the rich live that kind of lifestyle but even more luxurious oh like if and that's wanna... what the happy box is oh <laughs> <laughs> Just a big black rectangle. Yeah. That just like has like a home in it and it just goes on a track. And then the rich people go and then they brag about it. Right. Like, we stayed at a happy right. box last but night. But by that point, people who aren't, aren't able to reach that level of wealth are like, take your fucking happy box. Clearly you're not happy and we've got our happiness. Here's what we happens. Unlocked ourselves. Yeah. Elon Musk. takes the whatever profit from mm -hmm. all the happy box places yeah. and he doesn't need any more no. money. Why does he? And he puts it in this fund that would do healthcare for the people who want to be working. 
and it just flips the whole thing. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Man, I had yeah. this sketch idea back in the day when we were doing like nuclear family shit. And it was like Owen and I were talking about maybe we talked about this on the show, but it was like an Apple corporation kind of thing. I vaguely remember. And it's like a Ted talk and it's like a big announcement, huge. It's like grapefruit, you know, it's like, there's a big grapefruit and it's not Apple. It's grapefruit. Uh huh. It's gotta be a parody. We'll get sued. <laughs> it's like big grapefruit, uh, press conference. Like every, the whole world is watching mm -hmm. and it's just, the guy comes out in the suit and he's like the head of whatever of the whole fucking thing. And he goes, all right, well, the sales of every product we've ever sold have gone completely through the roof. Mm -hmm. We have, we are one of the most successful corporations in the world. We have made this much money. This is how much money we've made. We are, this is the first time in the world a corporation is blasting out how much money they've made. Maybe there's some applause after that. Right. And then everyone's like, what the fuck's going on? And it's like $70 trillion or something like that. Everyone's yeah. like inconceivable amount of money. And yeah. then the guy just goes, we've made enough money. We may, we're done. Like we don't have to make, we made all the money we're ever going to make. Yeah. We don't need any more money. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just, everyone's like, what? And they just go like, yeah. we're going to give, like half of this wealth to everyone that works Just at the company, uh -huh. everyone down to the factory workers and shit. Like we've made more money than we'll ever need. Right. We'll still make stuff because we'll still make money. We can make whoever's having fun can stay. Right. <laughs> but, we, but we're done. We're done. We're just done. We're not making any more money. Yeah. So we're done making money. Yeah. And it was just like, is he, yeah, it's like, then okay. Just, just he starts clapping and everybody else is like trying to comprehend it. Right, right. But if one company did that, it would change everything probably mm. because then all the other companies would be expected to do it. Yeah. I don't know enough. After I know, a while, I, I just know. don't know enough about know. how things work. I know. And then, and then I'm happy there. Right, right. You know, I'm like, fuck, that's a lot to think about if you know how everything works. I, I, my brain is so twisted by, like, movies that, yeah. like, I, I, my thought is, is that, like, if they ever did that, mm -hmm. they would upset somebody who's, like, on the board or somebody who's, Some like, makes money. Entity. Yeah. And they're like, I'm not going to make any more money. <laughs> and then it becomes, like, a whole, like, mafia hit thing, you know? Right. right. <laughs> But like, you know, isn't it, isn't it, there, there's a, <laughs> there is a number, there's a conceivable number. $600,000. Right? For Mike, it's $600,000. <laughs> but there is a conceivable number for each person, conceivably, hypothetically, that would be the amount of money you would need or you'd be want all set. and right. you'd be all set. Yeah. And it's surprisingly not that much. Depending on where you want to live. I mean, mm. if you want to go somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you don't need really much to just right. like live and survive. Like you could learn how to farm. You learn which berries to eat. Exactly. And, uh, but you know, if you want to live in LA and be where all the cool shit is and like where all the opportunities are. And, mm. But even by then it's like, you're working towards opportunities so that you can get an amount of money that allows you to like continue making things. That and that's not. one specific very specific one, job path. One path, exactly. Right. You can make a lot of money doing jobs that you could do wherever. Right. Yeah. Like do dirty jobs. You can do dirty jobs like Mike Rowe. Do you like that show? Yeah. I'm a big fan of Mike it's Rowe. It's gross. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be. But he's great, yeah. They did one. The one that sticks out in my head is the Tanner. Do you know what a Tanner is? No. Dude. Like the, like the full house guy? It's the person who like... DJ Tanner? DJ Kimmy Scribbler. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's the person who like uh, treats the animal skin to turn it into like oh right animal skin goods yeah yeah like leather or something and it's just that it's a process it's a process oh man and it goes does it's it a go dirty from job. it goes from the animal to yeah, the yeah, yeah. wow to the tanner yeah and then it goes everywhere else yeah man I I remember whenever he would do the toilet stuff yeah that stuff would always be like always crazy. had poop on him I wonder if he's yeah. ever had like uh, sepsis or a dysentery. I know. He must get all of his vaccinations. <laughs> all of them. Every one of he them. He gets them before they come out. <laughs> right. He's on an email list. <laughs> hey, we got this new one for poop in your mouth. <laughs> saw, didn't he do a thing where he had to reach into a cow and like pull out poop or something? I bet that was he, the first episode. Yeah, right? Like that's the What's thing. The that's the show. Job? That's yeah. the show. And it's and the most important thing about that show though, and we even talked about this on the last episode when we mm -hmm. had that history road from that 
person who was like dirty, a custodian. Dirty Disney. Who had a job. dirty Disney job. Yeah. A DDJ. As it's known on the stock market. This time we got Grungy my Lucky Ducks. Lucky Ducks toilets. This episode is brought to you by the Lucky Duck Club. Lucky Duck Club. You feeling like a dirty duck? Well, then now you're going to feel like a lucky duck. Lucky Duck Club. Really thought everything was going to stop when I hit that one button. But but it's important to see that these jobs exist. Mm-hmm. And that's what that show did more than anything. And yeah. Mike Rowe was like the perfect fucking host for it. Because mm-hmm. he's just like, he didn't mind getting dirty. <laughs> you know? And he, Dude, there's, <laughs> there's one question on the, on the application <laughs> right, to that yeah. show. Oh, you want to come in and audition for this hosting job? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the contract. Why don't you read that out loud for everyone in the room? Do you mind getting dirty? And then there, there's three executives <laughs> sitting back like this. arms up. <laughs> you ready to get dirty? Yeah. But he was Question like a Question per- number one. <laughs> of, <laughs> of one. Punchy. The thing is, is he was the perfect guy because he was like also like a like a man. Yeah, he was a he he wasn't afraid to get <laughs> he wasn't afraid to get his hands <laughs> He wasn't afraid to get his man's dirty. <laughs> his mans yeah but like he was like the yeah he was perfect because he didn't mind shoving his hand into a cow <laughs> he actually wrote that in under the answer to the first question right. <laughs> i'll get dirty right now you want what you want me to put my hand in a cow <laughs> <laughs> like why you why 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 are you so interested in putting your fucking hand in a cow i got this fun trick i used to do on the farm called <laughs> cow puppet <laughs> cow puppet you guess how it works uh yeah, whenever he did the poop stuff, it was always like fucking crazy. Mm. Like the septic stuff where like they twist open that thing down in the dirt. That's just big, years of and it. And then they open it and it's just like toilet paper worm just comes out. <laughs> <laughs> this would be it. Do we have a tushy oh, uh, let's see. ad today? Guys, get a bidet. And I'm no, but sure- we have me undies. Oh, that's great. Also, that's the next step after you're done with that. <laughs> Yeah, the um, day is crucial. Get a bidet. It's yeah. crucial. You don't have to be using that much paper if you don't want. But here's the thing, man. I mean, you know, water is also another precious commodity. And, you know, kind of just, I mean, you're what you're doing is you're weighing this and this. You want to destroy the environment by doing the toilet paper thing, which is probably way crazier than, like, the water usage thing. Hmm. But still. I feel I mean, like it's such know, a small amount of water. It is. It is. Also, you're cleaning yourself. Right. Like a shower. Right. I don't think we should be allowed to shower. Uh, celebrities have opened my eyes to not bathing. Yeah. And I think that it's so good to just not bathe. This is how things were back in the day. No, I like bathing. Back in the day, people didn't bathe for like centuries. I was, I was being a little sarcastic and I really don't have a dog in the fight. I don't care whether I didn't or not. Know. if we don't hang out. I don't care whether or not you bathe. But um. Really? A, like if I don't bathe ever? If we don't hang tell? out. No. Oh, if we don't hang out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's polite to bathe for other people. I guess if you're if you need to be around people, yeah. Also, not having germs on you is nice. And also, I think there's like a lot of health reasons why you should bathe. This is one of those situations where it's like I'm sure there's plenty of opinions on both sides, but I don't need anybody else's opinion. On how much right, 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 right. I could bathe. No one needs my opinion on how much they can bathe. All I'm saying is we started out probably smelling real bad yeah. for a very long time. It takes an hour to smell bad. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors say. <laughs> but like, you know, we, we for centuries, like even think about like you look at old tiny photos of people from like the 1920s, even like in the U.S. Let's say like New York. Yeah. In the 1920s. Yeah. You got those dudes in those fucking 
fucking tweed jackets like those those like what, what is, what's the material in august it's like yeah like i know what you're talking you know about. what i'm talking I'm about not good just with like, it's like the heaviest fucking yeah. thickest corduroy undershirt fucking material <laughs> and they're wearing like nine piece suits <laughs> yeah like cummerbund and fucking vests it looks like they're always wearing all of their clothes and then they're walking around like this with their yes. fucking hats and shit yeah and they're all what stiff and like shit. to do with charcoal drawing them? so they're wearing nine layers of clothing yeah and then they're sealing their heat that is should escape the top of your head With a hat. in their hat. Stovepipe hat. Stovepipe hat. So it's just regulating this heat in their body <laughs> with the nine layers of clothes. It's just a tube of hot. And the New York sun fucking beating down on these motherfuckers. Plus like, global, global warming is I brand mean, new. Global warming was the <laughs> latest thing in the streets. There was a song about it. Global warming, here it comes. Don't have to worry about it, we'll be dead. <laughs> I can't get out of here. After these. <laughs> keep smoking and keep spraying that stuff into the air. Don't forget that the chemicals that you breathe in will probably kill you. Everyone put asbestos in your homes. Everyone put asbestos in your homes. <laughs> your entire home made of asbestos. <laughs> But that's the thing. Like these motherfuckers were like, <laughs> Bad. these motherfuckers were sweating. Stinky, sweating. Dude, imagine all the sweat and stink on these motherfuckers. Are you kidding me, man? When was the shower invented, as as we know it? In the 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is like, let's they're, they're, let's say they did shower that morning. Three hours later, they're covered in sweat, probably. Yeah, uh -huh. And there's probably not deodorant. I mean, if there is, it's, I don't know, maybe like a bar of soap they rubbed under their arm before they went and put their fucking lead shirt on and shit. <laughs> lead <laughs> shirts. <laughs> Honey, where's my heating shirt? Is my lead shirt out of the wash yet? That's my hot shirt. <laughs> I want it as hot as it could possibly be on my skin. Heat up my lead shirt. I have a job interview. <laughs> Let's all sit by the fire in the summer. <laughs> but that's the thing, dude. They must have smelled like absolute fucking trash, even if they did shower that morning. And then think of the ones that didn't shower that morning. Dude, do you think FDR did his fireside chats in the summer? <laughs> <laughs> you think he had like fireside chats? They did everything. And it was like, it was August and people were like, I don't want to start a fire. <laughs> right, right, right. What are we, Houston? Was Houston? A, yeah. Latest news out of New York is somebody has presented a new question to the people. Quite absurd. Here he is. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why we have to wear like nine layers of clothing during the summer. That man was shot dead in the street for his heresy. That man was obviously a witch. Back to you. I called him a witch for asking. Why? <laughs> and you know we shoot witches on the spot in the 1920s. Anyway, build a fire. All oh right. my goodness gracious. Let's do these fucking ads. How about that? Fucking shit. I'm going to do some ads? Yes, please. I can't wait, I to, can't do wait to do the ads. I can't wait to do the ads. one of these songs. <laughs> Talk a little bit about Magic Spoon. Mike and I are big, 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 big fans of Magic Spoon, and I'll tell you why. It's delicious, and it harkens back to the days where you're a little leaky and you were eating your cereal pops right in front of the television, your sugar pops. At the Mahari. He taught us how to do it. He introduced, he introduced us to us our in I love that someone at Magic Spoon is listening to this right now. Hey, Magic Spoon, we love you guys. But here's the deal 
you want to eat those cereals you used to eat when you were a kid but not feel guilty and like you won't live a very long life because yes. you're doing that yeah magic spoon is here for that very reason they have created a cereal that you can eat and not feel bad eating and it's delicious and it has stuff you want in your stuff not stuff you don't want in your stuff that's what kind of stuff you want in your stuff like what kind of stuff i'll tell you what stuff how about this zero grams of sugar huh that's an absence of stuff stop, 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 is that stop, puck stop, your mandolin stop, 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 joey stop, stop, stop. how about 13 to 14 grams of protein <laughs> Anyway, we're pay- how much are we paying that guy? Joey on the Joey mandolin. On the mandolin. <laughs> Joey on the mando. On the mando. And mando. only four net grams of carbs in each serving, guys, with only 140 calories a serving. Now, that's what I call a breakfast, or so you're not overloading on the calories. Okay, you don't have to do it every... You don't have to do that much. Joey on the Joey mando. On the mando. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and... Low-carb. Joey on the Joey on the Joey on the Guys, then you can build your own box or you could get a variety pack with the available flavors. Check these flavors out. You ready for this? We got cocoa, fruity, <laughs> frosted, <laughs> peanut butter, mm, blueberry. And cinnamon. <laughs> and guys, Magic Spoon is bringing back two super popular flavors. That's cookies and creme and maple waffle. How about that? And they're permanently back. So they ain't going to go away. And when these flavors were first introduced for a limited time, they sold out right away, guys. So you guys should make sure and get your dang boxes before those guys are gone. You have to wait another shipment for them to come out. <laughs> so why don't you go to magicspoon.com slash banter. You grab your delicious cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code banter, 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 banter. at checkout to save $5 off your order. <laughs> and Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. So remember to get your del- next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com banter and use that code banter to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring the show. Thank you, Magic Thank Spoon. You, Magic Spoon. Thank you, Magic Spoon. deal about feels feels is a better way to feel better it's premium cbd that keeps your head clear and helps you feel your best this is of course called feels in a way i guess if you can think about it which i do do have you used the feels? oh yeah and not only have i used feels Mm -hmm. i a friend of mine was like i i'm having so much trouble sleeping like my insomnia like sucks right now and i was like look this company feels like sent me like a bunch of CBD stuff. Do you want to try this? And she was like, Oh fuck. Yeah, absolutely. I want to try that. Mm -hmm. Gave her the feels a couple days later. She was like, I, I I never want 
it to stop. Like yeah. I loved it. It put me right to sleep. I it's feel nice. so good. It was like exactly what I needed. Yeah. And doesn't it, make you all fucking no, it's, wonky. It's, it doesn't make you feel like anything other than good and like a chill. And like um, if you're having issues with sleep or maybe you've got some pains, like I, I kind of... I kind of use it in the way I would use it if when I got like a really bad headache. Yeah, like an Advil or something. Or if I was just like, I need to chill the F out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Boy. Boy. You know the times. And navigating the world of CBD, Mike, can be complicated. Yeah, uh-huh. But at Feels, they make the process as simple as possible. So you can start feeling better sooner. And are you new to CBD? Well, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide you through the discovery process. And do you know one? Do you and do you know already that CBD is right for you? Well, Feels has a hassle-free membership program that's guaranteed to help you feel your best month after month, or you get your money back. It's that simple, guys. It's shipped direct to your doorstop in only a few days. Feels is the new, natural, healthy, better way to feel better. Dude, sometimes when I like need to focus, but I need to chill, uh huh, and I don't really want to do another substance. <laughs> Take a couple drops. Just a couple of drops, mm -hmm. and it's just like suddenly everything's chill. I feel great. I'm able to concentrate. It's just I don't know. I don't know. No, it's very nice. It's nice. Yeah, and if you do want to know, they all have like a QR code on the back that you scan. And it tells you exactly what's in it. And yeah. <laughs> and there's a customer service team, Mike. Yeah. It says here. That's dedicated to making sure that you get the best use out of your CBD. Yeah. So why don't you guys start feeling better like Mike and I and our friends who have tried it. Mm -hmm. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash banter. And you're going to get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash banter. Become a member and get 50% off automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash van. Thank you, Feels. Thank you, Feels. Thank you, Feels. Bye. Boy. Bye. Boy. Bye. Thank you, Feels. Thank you, Feels. Bad boy. Bad boy. Bad boy. Bad boy. Guys, better help. Better help is a service we've talked about quite a bit. It's something that is a necessary service. I think it's a wonderful service. <clears throat> I think the fact that this exists is great. It's there to help you with your hurdles emotionally, psychologically. Yes. If you feel like you've got... Well, don't we all have those? I mean, we've got it all, man. I mean, you point to it. And we got it. <laughs> and it might feel like you're alone or nothing can help or you're just, this is the way you are. So you got to stay that way. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, is maybe some of that is true, but certainly not being alone and certainly not f from free from help, the possibility of help. Yes. And if this is ho how you are, then there are ways to work on that and learn to live a happy life dealing with these things that might prevent you from achieving happiness. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what BetterHelp does. BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist. You connect in a safe and private online environment, so it's convenient for you, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Hmm. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. You send a message to your counselor anytime. You're going to get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions if you want to talk to somebody more intimately all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change counselors if you're just not feeling it for whatever reason. It's more of affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is also available, guys. And the service is available for people worldwide. You can find the particular expertise you need online. You don't limit yourself to the counselors located near you, which is really something that I've run into in the past when I'm looking for a therapist. It's like, well, this person seems like the perfect fit, but they're too far away from me and I don't want to do that. Huh. And here's the deal. With BetterHelp, anything you share is confidential. 
As we said, it was convenient, it's professional, it's affordable. So why don't you guys go to betterhelp.com slash banter, take a look, see around. A lot of people use this thing to the point that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. That's great. So if you want to start to live a happier life today as a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash banter. Our sponsor, betterhelp.com slash banter. And you can join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash banter. Thank you, BetterHelp. <laughs> <laughs> the tired spider. conductor. There's a spider. <laughs> Fucking spiders everywhere. Where's all the spiders coming from, Mike? Dude, you've been out recently at night, right? Yeah, oh yeah. And you walk down the sidewalk, and sometimes you get the spider's web between the tree and the maybe somebody's bushes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you gotta do the fucking... I hate it. The thing... Dude... Nothing worse. And then it's never off. <laughs> Nothing worse. Honestly, like, I was walking to a meter just to make sure that we were all good big giant fucking web going from the meter to like a stop sign and then there was like this giant spider in it and Super i was like impressive. what are we doing here guys yeah very like, impressive gwen stefani was really on to something a bucket did his bad away <laughs> yeah guys let's talk about me undies last but not least certainly not by any means probably wearing me undies for over 600 days straight. Like, I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah, yeah. For, I think, like, for me, it might be like the past five years of my life. Yeah. Have been, or maybe three to four. Five is stretching it. But, like, a very lot of my life is has been exclusively with me undies. 365 days a year for five That's years. That's one year. Five years? Five years. That's 500 days. That's over 18. <laughs> That's five whole days. That's over 1,800 days. Damn! Of straight 1,800 days? 52. My God! Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and even think about it, because this is where we're at. And now it's time to think about it. <laughs> That's the time of the ad where we think about it. Because Mike and I... <laughs> Mike and I have been wearing MeUndies for quite a while. And if you do the math, that's a lot of days. And <laughs> not only that, why would we? Because they're comfortable. They're great. They're high quality. I'm, I I feel like maybe in the three to five years... I have exclusively worn MeUndies underwear pants. I've only had to throw away maybe one pair. Yeah. Because yeah, they yeah. last a really long they time. They do last a long time it's for crazy. underpants. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. As long as you're cleaning it up. <laughs> Which we touched a little bit on before. Uh, MeUndies are designed to be the softest thing on mm, the planet. Baby bottoms? Yeah, they're old news. MeUndies' signature micromodal fabric literally grows on trees, from trees, making their undies not only super soft, but also sustainable. And they offer different cuts because they just get it. We got different butts. Check out their undies, socks, bralettes, loungewear, and more. Ranges from sizes XL from 4XL. So, of course, MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. MeUndies also has their problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product, for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions. Go on, go on, go on. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash banter. That's <laughs> MeUndies.com slash banter. And I'll tell you, I wear a lot of crazy patterns <laughs> from MeUndies. I made specific sure that they would never send me a normal thing. I never want the normal <laughs> stuff. I got sushi, I got mixtapes, I got puppies, I got Star Wars. Yeah, it's like the adult trapper keeper, but what you're trapping is your trunk. I got mermaids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one. So thank you so much, MeUndies, for being a sponsor on the program. Bye-bye. That's fun.
Fun badger ads. Mike. Yes. We took a little trip to the P.O. box. Fun. Not we still have one ago. of those? We certainly do. Do you know what the address is? Absolutely not. Okay. Oh, I think it's on here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so in case you want to send us anything, the winner is... Fuzzy. <laughs> the address is the Valley Folk Care of Dynamic Banter. 15445 Ventura Boulevard, Suite 976, Sherman Oaks, California, 91403. Thank you, Steve. Great child. One and kiss. So we got some letters. We got some packages. Okay. So I thought we could do, this is more of like a like a, a tactile history road. This is the unboxing history this road. This is the unboxing history road, yeah. Which we'll just play this. I found out long ago. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a long way down the history road. Whoa, whoa. History road. Jam, 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 jam. just a super nice super yaki i think i know about this brand they do like a bunch of cool vintage like a like a uh, uh nostalgia stuff oh, like fun. muppets and disney things mm -hmm. this comes from sarah mccoy and it's just a nice note for me, I guess. Okay. It just says, Steve, just want to send a little note. Say, I'm glad you're back to being healthy after your COVID experience. Welcome back. Love you. Keep on honking. Sarah McCoy. That's wonderful. Thank you, Sarah McCoy. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. That's a beautiful card, too. It's got like some Muppets on there and shit. The stamp has the count. That's very cool. I like their art. Their art is very nice. A little two tone experience. It's nice, right? Super yaki. Oh wow, we got another typewriter letter. Art by Skyler Verdusco. Verdusco. Skyler. Oh, tight. Yeah. From J uh, is this from a Revolutionary War soldier? This is James McCandles. <laughs> Dear Mike and Steve, hello again from Texas. Stop. <laughs> okay. <It's> next. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Was that because Stop it! of that or because of no, that's like when you're in a typewriter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved seeing the positive reactions to the typewritten letter as we've added it to the wall of stuff over here in the studio. Um, so here's another one. <laughs> When I, <laughs> when I last wrote, I was four months deep into unemployment and had three typewriters. Now it's six months and 15 typewriters. <laughs> and do you need that many typewriters? Are they all? And I'm kind of wondering. <laughs> if you use them all. If I mix it up a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of wondering if something might be wrong. Kind of seems like I could use some of these to make some money. Tom Hanks is part of the reason I got into collecting these in the first place. Did you know that he collects typewriters, Tom Hanks? No. Yeah, and he like gifts them to people, like really nice ones. And there was like some re famous Reddit thing where someone was like, I can't remember what happened, but Tom Hanks ended up sending that person a typewriter and like a really nice typewritten note that was like, Hope you enjoy the typewriter. That's or nice. Yeah, it's really cool. What a cool heavy package I to get know. from Tom Hanks. It's super heavy. Could kill a guy. Well, let me see if I can do the Tom Hanks thing. Ah! <laughs> That's good. That's good. It's been a while. Uh, my initial reaction to seeing someone else send in a type letter was to challenge them to a duel, but we typists have to stick together. And he seems like a cool guy, Tom Hanks. Someone in the YouTube comments for the episode suggested that these be called history rotes. And I agree. The below story. Oh, I'm glad you do. <laughs> the below story is from 19. Thank you for your. Uh, thank you for that. The below story is from 1926. So these are real stories. Remember, he was like copying something from like an old thing. I, that last comment <laughs> took me completely out of it. <laughs> He's got a story here from. I'll conclude the market research. <laughs> 
Thank you so much to our <laughs> our board, our board of uh, our board of trustees. Our board of trustees. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Super funny. So what <laughs> is what are the stories? So he sent. The, there's a story from 1926. Okay. Um, and this time the typewriter is a 1969 Webster XL 500, and there's a bonus unrelated letter to the editor on the back. Stay safe and cool. Love James in San Antonio. So I think the other one said he was pulling these from magazines, like old magazines or something. Old stories from magazines. Yeah, and this okay. one's from 1926. Okay, great. Foghorn frightens cows. So it must be a headline of some sort. St. Catherine's Point, Isle of Wight, November 6th. The farmers are finding that the new foghorn erected here is interfering with the milk supply of the island. Whenever the horn sends forth its loud blasts, frightened cows scamper the fields and at milking time are not so prolific. The horn (laughs) has a range four times the length of the island so that no cow is free from it. Officials assert that more fog horns are to be installed, notwithstanding the dairyman's fear of milkless days when the winter fogs settle down in earnest. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> that's like a poem. It really is. It's like the horns are scaring the cows. Yeah, and that's people's like. That's, that's what they'll argue about. Yeah. In town. Well, we're gonna. We, the, Have the, you heard about these fucking horns? The cows are scared. Yeah. They're scared of the horn. <laughs> Cows can't milk when they're scared. What do you want, scared milk? <laughs> Shit don't taste right. Kids are going to drink it, and they're going to be scared. They're going to get scared of scared cow's milk. <laughs> How long until we have scared cow's milk t-shirt? Our cows are never scared at buttercream farms. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Our cows are always scared. Petrified, even. Get your scary milk, <laughs> <laughs> We we, we scary. hand scare every cow. It's just a little scary. <laughs> like, <puppet. yeah>. ah! <laughs> the cow just goes. Nah, nah. Okay, and here's the letter to the editor from 1969. <laughs> and in town, you're like, you know, they scare the cows. You know they funny. do. <laughs> <laughs> you know that scary milk comes with scared cows, right? <laughs> Why is this coffee extra good? <laughs> Why is this pound cake this extra delightful? This coffee during Halloween. <laughs> oh, we get our milk from Buttercream Farms. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> letter, letter to the editor, Sunday, October 5th, 1969. What is all this balderdash about King Kong <laughs> being an 18 inch model made of something rubberish? And an eight-foot mechanical arm is nothing sacred? I tell you, King Kong is real. He died a martyr. He died for all of us. Kong! 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 (laughs) Lester Spicer, age 43, Staten Island, New York. Wow. So is that like the first trolling? It was a letter to the editor. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just someone trying to be... Typewriter trolling? Typewriter trolling. I love that, dude. So I don't know how to hang. I feel like we should hang it up like this. I mean, they're both I know, good. They're, they're both, both like good. Art. We need to find like little thrift store frames to put them in. Yeah, that would be really nice. I could do that. Go to that cool fucking place. All right, nice, we got a, we got a package here. Open a wrap. Uh, do you want to open this one because there's a big one? Uh, okay. That I think, uh, yeah, I think that... Uh, Do we have the blades? Yeah, here you are, my friend. The Discovery Blades? That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. This is what we've named. Yes, sir. Okay, so the name on here is someone that I I had a friend of this same name. Oh, really? That I used to play street hockey with. No way! And it's from the Northeast. Wow. So, okay. This could be a, it's called, it's fragile. This could be a package from a friend. No way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's find out. The last package I got from a friend was, is behind me right now. Could you see that? I wonder if any of the cameras, I don't think any of the cameras could see it. Do you oh, see that? Oh, the little this? Andre the Giant? Yeah. Fuck yeah. From uh, 1990. Nice. And I remember going to the toy store with either my parents or my grandma. And it was probably after detention, mm-hmm. and uh, and they would say something like, uh, you know, what you can get one thing, and 
the Hasbro action figures, wrestling action figures, were five dollars. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't get more than one, and okay. I got Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh fuck yeah! And I left Andre because I was like, first of all, Andre's a bad guy, and I'm gonna run across him again. It's fucking Andre the Giant. Right. And I never ran across him again. And now, fast forward, however many years later, fucking thirty years later. Yeah. Those things are like hundreds of thousands of dollars. No way, the one that you in the skipped? package. In the package. Even the one So my friend found a Lucy and no fucking way. gave it to me in New York. Yeah. From the nineties. Isn't that crazy? That's so tight. Holy shit. Dude. What? What? First of all, I forgot that I was opening a package because I was just having a nice yeah, conversation. Yeah, it was a nice a it was a nice story. And I saw what it was. Wow. Wow. Mike's excited, guys. So this is a package from the Northeast. This comes from Massachusetts. Okay. I'm just trying to see if this is... Yes. It's my friend, Hardeep. This is your friend? Yeah. I'm Hardeep. Short for (laughs) Hardeep! Which is what we used to call him. Uh, I think Mike and Steve are avoiding me and don't want these pics to go public because I've sent this email in the past. Oh, are there pictures of you in there? No. But there, oh, yes, there are. And it's fucking, <laughs> fucking hard deep, dude. Hello, me again. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this at all. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting, Should I see I'm it? not being good at being on a podcast it's just like i've seen him a couple times and one time this is either my signature on his <laughs> no uh, on his like this is our yearbook okay and there's a picture of me playing guitar in our local cafe and he had me sign. <laughs> oh yeah you signed it that's you yeah man little boy that's me little boy little cargo shorts and then you stage. wrote a note to him can i read it yes it says hard deep i love you and your manly ways mm-hmm. uh, something is good Ho- is it hockey hockey is good hockey is good love mike falzone cool handwriting though right yeah oh yeah uh i think mike and steve are voting me because i sent this in the past blah 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 Okay, uh, I'm also sending these desserts. Uh, I'm also hoping these desserts get me on History Road. Sorry, I still can't read after all this time. <laughs> I went to high school with Mike, and we used to play hockey in high school. Humble brag. Hockey is in quotation marks because when we were in high school, we played hockey with a small group of people on a middle school tennis court with two trash cans lying sideways as the goal. <laughs> We sunk so much that we couldn't score goals in an empty fucking trash can. (laughs) I still play hockey to this day and I suck as much as I did 18 years ago. (laughs) I'm an example of practice makes you worse. That's great. Funny boy. Anyway, a few months ago, all the people at Strat City, baby boy, you got to have a sense of humor. (laughs) Go from the city city. It's just a town. That's very nice. Uh, Anyways, a few months ago, I was looking through some old yearbooks and I came across this little gem. At the end of each school year, we all take part in the anxiety-provoking ritual of asking people to sign your yearbooks. Yeah. I can't remember who. I can't remember who asked who, but Mike signed my yearbook not once, <laughs> not twice, but Trey's oh, is that what the th- motherfucking times. Go ahead. <laughs> I see two times. Here. You can tell that it was Mike working on his. This will be my signature and a famous signature. One signature was in the typical signature section. The next was on a question he was asked by the yearbook staff. His response was cool, but kind of cocky if you ask me. See below. Oh, fuck. I can only imagine what I said. The last There's one. There's a quote from you here. Yeah. Great. I can't wait. The last <laughs> one is a signature with his, with, and I quote, this will be worth money someday. So I'm here to cash in. <laughs> <laughs> is this the time to cash in? Dude. I mean, you can see how much you can get for it. Well, I could take a guess. <laughs> can I read what this quote says or is it still going? Um, the, the letter's still going. Oh, okay. I'm trying to see if he says anything about the quote. 
maybe do the quote. What does it say? It says, do you prefer, it's a question. Do you prefer playing music solo or in a band? What if it said, do you like music or comedy? And I was like, fuck comedy. Fuck comedy. <laughs> comedy sucks. I'll never do comedy. Anyone who does comedy is a big loser. <laughs> What if it said, I hope I die in St. Louis in this <laughs> Holy shit. I f- this is a quote from Mike Falza. I feel like I have more freedom when I perform by myself. <laughs> Shout out to the peppermint drink. <laughs> I like playing solo because if I decide to change a song in the middle of the performance. Fuck up or forget a chord. I can improvise without worrying if the band knows what I'm doing. Mike Falza. And isn't that what I do on stage now? Yeah. Improvise so I don't uh, forget how I memorize it. Right, right, exactly. I'm going to put this on eBay. Link to come <laughs> once you ask jugglers read this. Oh, we did it. Because I don't want to pay for three years of eBay, eBay fees waiting for you to read this history road. Dude, this is the fucking, this is might be my favorite history road of it's all great. time. Shout out to Derek. During these hard times, all proceeds will be tossed over to you twos. Oh. I need $600,000 to get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It may not necessarily make a lot of money. Shout out to the owner of How Driving School for the (laughs) Necessary. (laughs) Dude, come on, man. You can't just do that necessarily make enough money. We had this driving that instructor that was just like a fucking cartoon driving instructor. I love that. God, God bless you, Hardeep. Uh, so in the meantime, I'll buy some merch. Love you so much. Uh, but in all seriousness, you do dads are a fair, a funny pair of HHBs, horn honking boys. Aww. So polite to truncate it like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's one for you. <laughs> And very rarely uh, do I follow a podcast, comedy, uh, slash shows uh, as much as I listen to your stuff. So keep it up. Oh, that's nice. Aww. That's only because we know each other. Thanks, buddy. Uh, also, this is the only podcast I actually listen to uh, the ads on because you make them beyond hilarious. <laughs> hear that? You hear that, it sponsors? <laughs> hey, <up. laughs> Whoever needs to hear that, do you hear that? Yeah. Uh, I listen to your old stuff and the new stuff. It's incredible to see the growth in your talent. Keep up the good work. Hard deep with an H. P.S. Don't call me, maybe. Wow, what a sweet Hardeep, baby. God bless your fucking sweet, sweet face. That's a really sweet letter. And a, and a nice little peek into your childhood or yeah. your friendship. Your your what, what year? This was high school? This would have been like probably sophomore year in wow. high school. Playing so cool. a Taylor guitar, yellow, Old Navy, or American Eagle shorts, board shorts with a tie, you tie them in the front. Definitely matching, uh, like, Aeropol style hat. Yeah. Yikes. Short Quintessential hair 90s, or early 2000s. Yeah. Hair combed down and then up in the front. Oh, yeah. This music is completely <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> Playing in a cafe for little to no one. Amen. <laughs> good, the good old days. And I bet if you showed this whole page, there'd at least one person who's in jail. <laughs> oh, my yearbook, dude. My yearbook <laughs> yeah. got a lot of people in jail or dead. We should play bingo. Oh man, who's in jail? Or <laughs> let's play who's in jail and who's dead. <laughs> I hate that game. <laughs> I hate everyone's it. favorite game and then okay so what's this he fucking sent us a lemon pie oh God. that we were talking about oh and wow. remember when i was talking about those little individual pies yeah with a little individual uh tin crust this is that this table talk pie oh wow it's 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 literally destroyed yeah. inside there yeah i wouldn't eat it but i just want to look at it i want to spray it with something that'll make it last shellac it i want to shellac it look at this grease we mark. should mint it oh wow and that's something else and lemon pies did you eat these no not like that no. oh homie this is good until july 22nd dude did you I get these sure from the <laughs> the vending machine this is only for hardy did you get these from the vending machine at sterling house can you smell it I mean, it smells like chemicals shaped like a pie. 
But holy shit, man. Thank you for sending these. W one of the best history roads in some time. Not that there's any type of competition. No, not at all. But when you get something from your hometown, from your boys. It's, it's always nice. Yeah. To get a little hello from the boys. This will go on the wall, too. All right. Well, we have one last <clears throat> package here. Uh -huh. And it's quite big. And I'm going to assume it's some kind of cardboard standee of some kind. I mean, you know what, what assumptions do. I, I'm going to assume it's a standee of some sort, which might also mean Jesse Stillwell might have something to do with it. Add it again. Add it again. But I don't want to make assumptions. Because he looks at us and he's like, those boys got a lot of space. <laughs> yeah, they need more garbage. <laughs> so I'm going to get in here, Mike. You can do some, descri you can do some descriptive. Okay. So here goes Steve. Oh, Steve, would you mind hitting record on that? We might actually be out of card space, but go ahead and hit record. Let's see how long that works for. It's recording. It's James Corden. So Steve is opening a box that when I approached him on the street looked not unlike a folding table. And I was kind of like, why are you bringing a folding table to our house? Do you not like the table that Zoya and Rachel Rogers made with their bare hands? And Steve said, no, I love that table. I would never do that. I think this is one of those fucking stand up things. And then, uh, or he didn't say that, but I did think it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no matter what it is, I promise you it won't stay in your home. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. Cause sometimes your friends just know you. Okay. So it's certainly, it is a stand. It, it is a standy. So it is a standy. <sighs> Steve is removing it from the half a folding table. We're going to try to do a reveal here. Yeah. Okay. I got to tell you from the back, can I say what it looks like or is that spoiling yeah, it? It looks like a cow, which is weirdly appropriate. Creepily appropriate. Creepy, creepily appropriate for this. Stupid. And we're going to have to apologize for the creep. <laughs> you could probably just hit the skip forward 15 seconds button. <laughs> That would be a good time for that bud. You guys like this sound? Um, we're going through a tunnel, but we'll be right back with you. It's a life-size stand-up of a cow's ass. It's a life-size, it is a life-size stand-up of a cow's ass. And somebody decided that enough trees could die to make this, and that would be kind of, that would be fine. <laughs> so it's just a cardboard cutout of a cow's ass. And the back of the other udders look like kind of a giant nut sack. And there's a tail that's always discolored at the end because of poop. how poop and pee pee come out. Because of how poop and pee pee come out. <laughs> and you can see the, I mean, the back of the skeletal structure of the cow. And it's not the most attractive, but you know, sometimes you think something's funny and you go with it and you say commit to the bit and you finish it all the way out and now there is a cow's ass just kind of standing right here and you can clearly see that in the wide camera on our video podcast edited by ryan froke um whoever sent this i don't really get it no that's safe to say steve and i would even because we are partners i would go as far as to back you up and to say, I don't get it either. I guess it's like, what's the most ridiculous thing we can send to the boys? And for that, I, I guess you're close. He's or maybe there there's a time. bit that we said a long time ago that we can't possibly remember or keep track of that said, wouldn't it be funny if we had a cow's ass in here? Right. Remember? Yeah. Maybe there's a clip. Any clip attached to the box? Is there a note in here? Is there a clip in the box? Oh, there is a clip in here. Let's check it out. Can we cut? <laughs> <laughs> it's a reading rainbow. rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's great. Let's check this out. What a stark, but you don't have to take my word for it. Right, right. Let's, th what a stark uh, one history road to the next. You know, you never know what you're going to get. Well, I will say this though. What a show. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, you know what, whatever it's going to be, I bet it'll be funny enough for me to like keep around for a little bit. This is going into the garbage. <laughs> you sent us garbage. You sent us garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you got a new show. 
<laughs> what did you talk about? <laughs> uh, you and Olin doing yeah, a cool thing? Me and Olin Rogers created this like satirical travel show called The True Millennial Survivor. And we did our first episode in Joshua Tree in the desert. And you could watch it on Olin's channel. Are you happy with it? Yeah, it's fun. I want to check it. I haven't checked it out yet. It's just fun. It it's just a fun thing. I like a fun thing. Sometimes I like you Olin. Just want I like fun you. Thing. Yeah. And uh, and Kevin shot it. Oh, nice! And Olin edited it. Nice. And we all uh, we all shot it a little bit. Where can we check it out? Where can we see Olin's that? Uh, YouTube channel? Hell yeah! Check it out, you dummies. Check it out, you dummies. Don't you cows? But you cows butt. You don't want to uh, be a cow's ass on this don't one. Don't be a cow's ass. Don't have a cow's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Any other plugs? <laughs> Um, I've been doing those advice videos every Tuesday. Fuck yeah, dude. Working. Look at you working and hustling. Yeah, man. Sometimes when you don't have the big job or whatever is going to get you that $600,000, you got to create your, a lot of your own. Exactly. Jobs. And also like, I'm just like loving making stuff. Yeah. And I got a great daily process for making stuff and it makes me feel very fulfilled and very happy yeah if they're not gonna get they're not gonna give you they might not give you a show so you gotta make a show yeah 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 also who are they a bunch of horse cows and they're inside of their asses ha <laughs> tom <Yeah>. hanks <laughs> <laughs> shout out to um who was on the mandolin Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Yeah. No, the guy on the show, on our show. He oh, was the on... mandolin, Joe. Yeah. Joe? Joe. Joe. Shout out to Joe on the mandolin. <laughs> Shit, we suck. Our <laughs> brains don't work. Our <laughs> brains don't work no more, boys. That was like five bits ago. Sorry, guys. Our brains don't work no more. One day we're going to come on to Dynamic Banter and go, hey, guys, welcome to the show. Sorry, our brains don't work no more. And then that'll <laughs> be the end of the whole show. <laughs> 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 Dude, you know what's actually going to happen is we're going to do it five years after that happens and no one's going to notice right. for a long time. Right. Or they're going to notice and we're not. And then the last and they're episode. they're going to be worried about us for a while. The last episode of this show was a doctor coming on and being like somewhere around 560 that happened. <laughs> anyway, this has been episode 3040. <laughs> There's like a brain of when we started the show and a brain and a, a, a scan of a brain for the <laughs> days where we lost our minds. Yeah. And the doctor just goes, this has been. <laughs> <laughs> this was. This was. <laughs> and this has been. <laughs> That's how it ends. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen, we appreciate your listenership, your viewership on the YouTube channel, your treats and your gifts in the mail. Shout out to HeadGum and the sponsors. Scrack it, scrack it. <laughs> Shout out to Mike one time. Shout out to Steve Derek. one time. Derek. Shout out to Derek. And Hardy. shout out to all you guys sending History Roads. Um, we're going to get to your History Roads in the next episode. My buddy Ralph sent in a History Road and I wanted to read it, but we'll save it for the next episode. Machio? Yeah. <laughs> from Karate Kid. The like Karate that. Kid. I love that. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you and we'll catch you next time on Dynamic. Guys, it's Mike. I'm sorry I'm jumping in here at the end, but I forgot to tell you about how dude the fucking surrounded friends and friends crowd work show is finally coming back to the hollywood improv after like two long years they're finally having us back on september 10th which is a friday it's in like two weeks and i would love to have you there and there are tickets on the improv website if you go to my instagram you click a clack or click you click a direct me uh it's the link in my bio and there's tickets right on there and uh if you have trouble finding them just hit me up and i'll hook you up and i would love to have you there so um yeah surrounded crowd work show um september 10th which is a friday night fucking come out and bring the kit and bring your mouths or you won't be able to laugh that's i think robin williams said that so love you guys Bye.